Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure to be here. Every time I uh, come to a Dan conference, I'm um, struck by how rare it is um, that scientists, physicians, and parents have this opportunity to come together, to talk to each other, to learn from each other. I'm not sure you realize how special and how rare that is. Generally, um, scientists go to scientific meetings and physicians go to medical meetings. And the stakeholders, the people who are affected by the disease that we're discussing, are never invited. They're never attend. And that you may not realize. So I just want you to realize how special this is and what an opportunity and an honor it is for me to be involved here with all of you and sharing uh, what we're learning in Arkansas. So thank you very much for inviting me. So for my part this afternoon, I want to uh, talk to you and share with you uh, what we have going on in Arkansas, our autism uh, research lab. And um, I'll review some clinical trials and uh, what we're calling the Arkansas Autism Alliance. Can everybody hear me in back? No? OK. I will speak up. <laughs> Thank you. So this is an overview of what I'll be covering um, in the next hour. And it's a, I always start out with these slides, so I want you to bear with me. Um, it's an overview of uh, the metabolic pathways that we found to be abnormal in many autistic children. And these pathways, uh, you've had a wonderful introduction uh, by Dr. Deeth. I'm going to review them again because I know when you change the font, you lose it. <laughs> so we're going to start over and walk you through these pathways. Um, there are three interconnected pathways of folate, methionine, and glutathione metabolism. Once you have that background history, which will, I, I really think it's worth it if you hang in with me for four slides, then when we get to the data, you'll even if you just grasp the concept is all you need to do, then when we get to the data, it'll have a lot more meaning for you. So please hang in while we go through the pathways very, very carefully. Um, once we have our Biochem 101 background, um, then I'll show you our results of our recently completed um, intervention trial looking at the efficacy of methyl B12 and folinic acid on glutathione redox status and also this time core behaviors of autism. Then I want to look, show, share with you the parent metabolic profiles. And this was an absolutely accidental, if you will, um, observation that both parents generally bring in the child. So it was a question of, well, they're here, let's check them out too. And as you'll see, the results were quite surprising and very interesting. So I will show you the results of the parent profiles. And then I want to show you um, the four specific aims uh, of our NIH-funded um, project. Um, this to just give you an idea of the research directions we're, we're going with this NIH-funded pro project. It's wonderful because it's a five-year project, so we have a lot of time to build up a lot of samples. And then I, I also want to uh, review for you the design of our soon-to-be-launched placebo-controlled double-blind crossover study, and I'll explain what that is where we're looking at broad spectrum nutritional supplementation largely based on the DAN approach. So this will be a very interesting study to see if we can actually show in a placebo controlled fashion that intervention in, in biomedical actually works. And then I'll end with a, um, our dream for Arkansas that we're calling the Arkansas Autism Alliance. It's a center for, for autism and our involvement in the Autism Treatment Network, or ATN. So here we go with the pathways. Uh, again, uh, it's just four slides. Um, but before I start the pathways, let, for those parents that may this may be all brand new to, let me just explain what a metabolic pathway is. Let's get down to basics. All it is is a series or a sequence of enzyme reactions that either tack something on to a molecule or pull it off or break it apart. And then another enzyme will take it and make other subtle changes and it all interacts with a huge web that we call the metabolome, that's every enzyme reaction in, in the cell, that eventually uh, will meet the energy needs and the uh, functional requirements of the cell. So what I'm going to be showing you just now is a very targeted approach to three metabolic pathways that we think are particularly important 
in, uh, and, and abnormal in children with autism. So the first pathway is called the folate cycle. And it simply involves the transfer of this methyl group, or CH3, is transferred first to methyl B to B12 in this incredibly fascinating enzyme that Dr. Deeth introduced you to. The methyl group goes first to B12 to create methyl B12, and then it's transferred all within the enzyme to homocysteine to generate methionine. So all that's involved is this transfer of the methyl group to create methionine. The second part of our cycle is called the methionine cycle. And here, methionine picks up an adenosyl group. That's called S-adenosyl methionine. It's picked up the adenosyl group to create S-adenosyl methionine, or SAM, which is a very important molecule because it's the methyl donor. It's taking this methyl group that it picked up from folate, and now it's transferring it to a whole other network of methylation, essential methylation reactions that are important for the function and the viability and the gene expression of the cell. Once it gives up its methyl group, it becomes SAH, or S-adenosyl homocysteine, which then is broken down into its two parts, adenosine and homocysteine, and the cycle goes round and round in every cell of the body. Um, and the purpose or function of this methionine cycle is that it's a way that the cell has to conserve or recycle or regenerate methionine because methionine is the mother molecule here um, and it's an essential amino acid. That means we can't make it so we have to conserve it. So this cycle is a way that we can keep methionine levels constantly available between meals to provide for ongoing protein synthesis as well as these methylation reactions. The ratio of the methyl donor SAM to the product, and it actually it's a product inhibitor, SAH, gives us what we call the methylation potential or the capacity of that uh, individual to methylate. Okay, then the, this is as far as we go. The third pathway is called the transsulfuration pathway, and it takes two B6 dependent steps, taking homocysteine out of the methionine cycle, now down two steps, to, three steps to cysteine. Cysteine is what we call the rate-limiting amino acid for glutathione synthesis. And that means that when you run out of cysteine, you can't make any more glutathione. Cysteine then is involved in the synthesis of glutathione, and I'm showing you glutathione in its two forms. It's down in the bottom there. GSH is the active form of glutathione. That's, it acts by donating the H or the hydrogen. It acts to be the major intracellular antioxidant and the major mechanism for detoxification. It's the natural chelator, if you will, in the body. Glutathione's in dynamic equilibrium with GSSG, which is the oxidized or spent form of glutathione. Two GSHs have given up their hydrogens. Now they're linked at the sulfur, and it has to be converted back by yet another enzyme reaction to the active form GSH. As Dr. Deeth pointed out, it's absolutely essential that this ratio, what we're calling the antioxidant or redox potential of the cell, that this ratio be far, the equilibrium be far, far to the left so that there's at least 50-fold excess active GSH to this inactive oxidized form. And again, that provides the cell, the body, with the antioxidant potential to quench free radicals, to chelate mercury, for example, and detoxify. So it's very, very essential for um, redox potential. So that's it. The folate cycle then leads to the methionine cycle, leads to transsulfuration.